The, the arm, the upper limb, the hand, the fingers, the thumb, these are really important to us and like many parts of our anatomy we don't really notice how important they are to our day-to-day -day lives and the things that we, we do and we love and we take for granted until they don't work anymore. And up here in the shoulder region and running through the axilla are a complicated collection of nerves and neurons called the brachial plexus. We should have a look at the anatomy of the brachial plexus so we better understand the nerves and the function of the upper limb, right? I first did a video on this about nine, ten years ago, which was me drawing on a whiteboard and chucking pens around. Um, I don't know if this one will be as brief, but the aim will be to talk about what it means to be a plexus, what's going on in a plexus, and then to look at the, the major components, the major ideas, the roots, the parts of the brachial plexus and the major nerves that come from it, and then summarize what those major nerves do. Not to look at the minutiae in all the extra detail, we'll save that for another day. The spinal cord runs down the vertebral column, down the back, and from the spinal cord, spinal nerves come out from in between the vertebrae. And we give them names and numbers. So if they're in the neck, we call them cervical. If they're in the thorax, we call them thoracic. And in the neck, it's important to understand that there are seven cervical vertebrae, but there are eight cervical spinal nerves. And we number them C1, 2, C8, as in C1, C2, you know what I mean. Um, and some of those nerves, along with the first thoracic spinal nerve, will come together and they will want to form the major nerves of the upper limb and some of the shoulder region nerves. So a plexus, now imagine that each spinal nerve is a bundle of thousands of axons of neurons. So a neuron cell body is sending its axon out into the body to either collect sensory innovation or send motor in innovation. And it sends action potentials along those axons. So those axons, those fibers you might say, are running out in the spinal nerves to their target organs. And then a plexus is a bundling together of the, those bundles of neurons in new ways. You know, you're, you're organizing the cables underneath your desk, you're organizing the wiring in your house, you're just zip tying bundles together and sending them to wherever you want them to go. You're not making new connections, you're not making new synapses. Plexuses are just bundlings of neurons. And at the end of all that bundling, we have four, or maybe five, major nerves which will now run to the major structures of the upper limb and control some groups of muscles and carry sensory innovation back from the skin. The brachial plexus refers to the brachium. The brachium is the arm. The antebrachium is the forearm. Now, if you want to be a little bit more specific, as the spinal nerve comes out of the spinal cord, it actually gives off two rami. A ramus meaning a branch, literally. Um, and there's a posterior ramus that runs to the deep back structures. Um, and the anterior ramus is the nerve that runs off down the upper limb or around the torso. So the roots of the brachial plexus are made up of the anterior rami of spinal nerves C5, C6, C7, C8, and T1. So we can count the cervical spinal nerves relative to the vertebrae, and in the neck, the first cervical spinal nerve appears superior to the first cervical vertebra. This here, this is the brachial plexus. This is it forming from the roots. So the roots of the brachial plexus are those anterior rami of the spinal nerves that we're seeing here. So there's a couple of ways of identifying them. You can count the vertebrae, if you're confident in remembering that C5 is superior to the fifth cervical vertebra, or you can look for 
the parts of the brachial plexus, which I'll talk about. So if we see the upper trunk forming here, you might remember that C5 and C6 form that, or you might start at the top and count your way down. Any, any exam question I ask about the brachial plexus, I consider to be a difficult anatomy question. But anyway, we start with the spinal nerve roots. Uh, C5 and C6 come together to form the upper trunk or the superior trunk. So the next part of the brachial plexus are the trunks. C5, C6, C7 just runs straight through. Doesn't make any connections yet. And that is the middle trunk. And then C8 and T1, which are hidden away down here in green. C8 and T1 come together to form the inferior trunk or the lower trunk. So those five roots have now become three trunks. And then we see the divisions. Now the divisions are a bit of a tricky beast. When I'm dissecting, I can kind of tease out the divisions, but I don't pay them that much attention. You can kind of almost tease them out on the model. This is the way to think about the divisions. The, the trunks we've seen, the divisions are then branches from those trunks that will form the chords. And there are three chords of the brachial plexus. Now, the posterior divisions of all three trunks, so the posterior divisions of the upper, middle and lower trunks, will all come together to form the posterior cord, which is posterior to the axillary artery there, right? The anterior divisions of the middle trunk and the upper trunk will come together to form the lateral cord, which actually you can see up here is still kind of upper, right? And then the anterior division, the only one that's left over, the anterior division of the inferior trunk just carries on through as the medial cord. So the divisions of the brachial plexus are branches of the trunks that then bring neurons together to form cords. So the cords of the brachial plexus. Now the cords of the brachial plexus, like I said, there are three, and this is the axillary artery here. The subclavian artery has become the axillary artery. We're in the axilla, we're in the armpit. And the axillary artery will become the brachial artery when it leaves the axilla. We just changed the name of the vessel. But the cords of the brachial plexus that we see around the axillary artery are named by their position relative to the axillary artery. What do I mean? Well, I mean the lateral cord is lateral to the axillary artery. The medial cord is medial to the axillary artery. The posterior cord is in blue there. It's posterior to the axillary artery. So we've got three cords. And then we get my favorite bit, the M. <laughs> there is an, when I describe this to students, they can see it, but there is, there is an M shape and we see this on the cadaver as well. We're getting now down to the final major nerves of the brachial plexus. And what we're seeing is, so here's the humerus. This is the musculocutaneous nerve because I know it's going to go to the flexor muscles here, like biceps, brachii. This is the median nerve in the middle which is also going to run to the median forearm. So the median nerves in the middle here. And then this here uh, is the ulnar nerve. And the ulnar nerve runs around your funny bone, right? Which is very, well, you know where your funny bone is. So musculocutaneous, um, median nerve and ulnar nerve. And if you follow them up and down and up and down, they're making an M shape. So what we're seeing is that the lateral cord is giving off the musculocutaneous nerve. The lateral cord and the medial cord of the brachial plexus are coming together to form the median nerve. And then the median cord, uh, the medial cord is giving off the ulnar nerve. M, bum, 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 bum. And then that posterior cord continues through as the radial nerve. That's more biggie. People often include the axillary nerve as a biggie for them. The axillary nerve is going to wend its way around here, innervate deltoid and other bits and bobs in the skin around here, whereas the radial nerve is a really, really major nerve of the upper limb. It's going to innervate the posterior arm, posterior forearm, so the extensor muscles. 
And that is the brachial plexus. Those are the main chunky bits, right? So the purpose of the brachial plexus is to take spinal nerve roots and organize their neurons into the major nerves of the upper limb and then carry those neurons to muscle groups in the upper limb and patches of skin in the upper limb. Um, and we have the, the, the roots, C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1 become the trunks, superior, middle and inferior, which then give off a number of divisions which come together as the three chords of the brachial plexus, lateral, medial, and posterior. And then those become the major nerves of the upper limb. So, major nerves of the upper limb then. Musculocutaneous nerve, its musculo job is innervating the muscles of the anterior arm, so elbow flexors. His cutaneous bit is to innervate a bit of skin down here. The median nerve, is going to pass to the anterior forearm and run down the median. So it's going to innervate most of the muscles that are going to give finger flexion, wrist flexion. They're also going to pass to the little muscles at the base of the thumb. So they're important in those dexterous movements of the thumb. Well, some of them like opposition. The ulnar nerve is going to run down here. It's going to have some jobs to do here, but the ulnar nerve's main jobs are in most of the small muscles of the hand. Those fine dexterous movements of the hand. Um, and also that muscle there. So the ulnar nerve is innervating most of the small muscles within the hand. The radial nerve is going to innervate the muscles of the posterior compartment of the arm, that is triceps. So it's going to give elbow extension, and it's also going to innervate the muscles that extend the wrist and extend the fingers. And you can imagine that the areas of skin innervated by these nerves, radial, 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 meet. All right, they're kind of similar. And it's really, really useful to have that general understanding, that general overview, which you can then fill in with detail as you go. But a lot of function can be derived from that. All right, break your plexus. Uh, I mean, I think this is putting together a brachial plexus video is always a little bit daunting but I decided to keep it trimmed down to the major points to make it more useful to you and I've been giving a lot of tutorials on this recently but I have also done videos on injuries to the brachial plexus herbs palsy clumpkies palsy have a look at those if you want to see a little bit more detail about what happens when parts of the brachial plexus get injured. All right. See you, actually I might take next week off. See you next time.